How you doing, Josh? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing good. good. First day of school for the kids, so it's always an exciting day yeah. around here. Yes. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> She's sad about it. Yeah. <laughs> so where are you located, Josh? Uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, cool. Okay. Let me plug that into the app. I'm going to pull the app up and, and put it in your location so we can have all the right data. There we go. You see that all right? Yes. If we go into uh -uh. use location and map in South Carolina last time we did this. So, so now, now we're going to Kansas City. Y'all are pretty close to us weather wise. So this should be this should be good. Last so last spring frost, April 19th, that's just like ours. About two weeks earlier on the first fall frost, it looks like. Which makes sense because you're a little bit north. So awesome. So how long have you been gardening, Josh? Uh so this was actually my first time uh this for over summer. Uh wasn't successful, but at least I tried. Hey, that's uh, awesome. So what 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 got you into gardening? Um I guess kind of a little uh I guess like uh paranoia from seeing where the world's heading right now wanting to mm -hmm. make sure we've got something to eat yeah <laughs> so that that's kind of what what started the process yeah I, back in 2015 when we had the ebola scare that was one of the things that got me into gardening was like oh man if there's ever a bad one of these things we better be ready so i i definitely understand where you're coming from so what all stuff did you try growing uh so i had tomatoes cucumber uh spaghetti squash bell peppers although i never got any of those uh tried a bunch of lettuces zucchini beans turnips and carrots sounds so you, like you did quite a bit you and all i yeah. tried <laughs> that's awesome what did you have the most success with uh I guess so. I, I got cherry tomatoes that I've gotten probably a handful out of. Okay. Th so they weren't bad, and uh, I've gotten two gigantic cucumbers, but that's pretty much it. Well, the I, I take it back. I do have a spaghetti squash out there. Oh, that's Let's cool. Let that one grow. Well, the fall should be a lot easier for you. Yeah. And you started on one of the most difficult years. Has it been oh, as hot gosh. there as it's been here? Like, it's, yeah, it's been bad. Yeah, and so, my, my main problem. I, I know the reason why I wasn't as successful as I could have been is because I wasn't watering enough. Yeah, and I don't have any type of automatic watering, so everything suffered because of that. Yeah, between the heat and the weeds and the bugs, it's been a really difficult year. It was so, a really pesty year. Yeah, we had a lot of pests too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the fall will be easier because there's fewer pests. Also, the cooler temps helps. And the stuff that we're going to be talking about today are all things that generally taste better and uh, do better once it gets colder. And even some of these things should hopefully overwinter for you and then come back in the spring. So okay. um, if you want, we can jump in and start looking at some seeds. Sure. Share my screen again. Did you have anything in particular in mind that you were? Uh, not, not that I can think of. Okay. I'm going to filter down to cool season. Um, we could go down to can to can be planted, but we might cheat a little bit on some of these. So, like green beans, probably are outside the planting window for you. Let's go look at it. Um, oh, cool season. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I was like, where are the beans? Okay, bush beans. So, uh, okay, yeah, you're still in the window for a few more weeks. So that's awesome. So um, there are some things that you can still try and sneak in um, that you'll harvest a lot of this year. So beans would be one of them. Did you try growing beans this year yet? Um, hang on, I'm trying to remember if it was peas or beans that I put in. I'll pull out my app. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was pole beans that, I, that I've got out there. Okay. So it's, it's too late to grow pole beans now. They take a little bit longer to mature. But bush beans, you're still within uh, the window for it. And um, the great thing about bush beans is you get a lot of them mm -hmm. at once, basically. Yeah, all at once. So in like 50 to 60 days, you'll get a, a 
giant round of beans for about two weeks until it gets too cold. Um, and then that plant will be done. But it's really nice because you'll get a big harvest and then you're able to preserve those. Like the, an easy way to, that we usually is to freeze them. Um, you want to talk a little bit about how we freeze them? Yeah, all we do, I mean, it's really simple. All you do is just chop the edges off of them. And then we blanch them in like some boiling water for like a minute or two and then put them over into um, some ice, like an ice bath and then dry them off and put them in the freezer. And that's like really all we do. And then they're good, just good to go. Okay. So do you want to try growing some, some bush beans? Yeah. Let's, um, do you remember what our favorite variety was? Ellie is not being nice for this. <laughs> her, her bedtime. She's, she's new. This is her first time doing one of these too. No, she did the last one, but she slept through it. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that, um, that Muscati, is that how you say that one? That's the one that we we had, right? That's the one that we did. That or the the Parks Whopper might be a good one too. Um, see if yeah. Parks Whopper. This is the one that we grew this summer, fifty seven days. Yeah. Which one sounds better to you, Mascotti or Parks? Hold on, <laughs> Ellie, Ellie. Are you gonna let us? You gonna let us do this? I I guess that Mascotti will go with that one. Awesome. So let's add that one to our cart. All right, so we got our first item in the list. So we got fifty dollars to spend. That should just about ten different plants. Probably we're looking at uh, picking from. There. Yeah. Um. All right, so let's think about other things that you could plant now that you could get a harvest out of. Let's go ahead and see what that can be planted filter shows for us. Um. Curious if any squash. Oh, the search over overwrote the filter. We fixed that in the new version. I hadn't made it out yet. I think squash, though, you're still eh, outside of the window by nine days. But I'm betting a zucchini could still squeeze in. What do you think? I don't know. By the time he, he got these seeds, though, that's the problem. Yeah, because it'll, it'll take a couple days at least. Yeah. So we probably need to try and stick with mostly cool season stuff that you're going to be growing throughout the fall. And then into the winter. Um, okay. The I think you'll have enough time for those beans, though. I mean, you, you had still two more weeks to plant, like, mm -hmm. according to the yeah bad planting time. So let's let me ask you this: What kind of greens do you like the most? Like, do you have certain ones that you've eaten before at restaurants or something that you like? Uh, I mean, I'm not particularly uh, picky with with my greens. Yeah, I don't think any of us really are. There's very various lettuces and yeah, we love tomatoes. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's check out because <laughs> lettuce, lettuce is, is pretty easy to grow, also. Mm -hmm. So, and I love planting it too. It's super simple. You don't even technically have to just go through and space them out. Like what we do with lettuce, we just sprinkle out the seeds and let them just come up. And you can harvest them really at any stage. So while we're going through and like thinning them out, we'll take like the little tiny little lettuce greens and eat those. So with lettuce, the thing you want to think about is there's a couple different types of lettuces. So you'll have like these leaf lettuces, like black seeded Simpson. Is and that's what lettuce. I would recommend doing is a, yeah. is a leaf one. The head lettuces are nice, but they can be more difficult because of pests and things like that. They just take longer to mature. I think starting out new, I think I think a leaf lettuce would be good. Butter yeah. crunch is one of our favorites. Um, Black seeded Simpson is always really good too, though. Uh, let's look and see what else we have in here. I think there's a lettuce blend in here. If I remember right. I like the one that has the uh, the red ones also. Has red and green. The salad I like different bowl mix colors of of lettuce. It makes makes the salad more interesting. The salad bowl mix, I think, would be a good one for you. It's more than just lettuce. It also has some arugula, some mustard greens. How do y'all feel about those like spiciest greens? Do you like those also? I'm I'm sure me and the wife would be good with them. Kids maybe not so much. <laughs> 
the cool thing about mustard greens, so I never really had them before uh, we got obsessed with trying to grow everything we possibly could and then force ourselves to eat it. Um, so the way I eat mustard greens is I replace my mustard on my hamburger with a mustard leaf. So you get that same oh. flavor of mustard, but you get more health benefits because there's a ton of vitamin K in those leaves. And it's really cool. Um, Carrie hates mustard. Yeah, so I am she- not a fan. I do not like the taste of mustard, so I can't do any of that. I do like tricking her and being like, hey, try uh, this spinach. And then she so takes a bite. And- he's so mean to me. <laughs> um, but a couple of our kids really like mustard and they like they like mustard greens too but then some of them are like me and refuse they're like (laughs) oh so i think the salad bowl mix might be a good option for you what do you think sounds good all right so that'll get us a mix going um i do think though there's so there's not any spinach in that mix and even if there was i would encourage you to do more spinach spinach is my favorite probably my favorite plant to grow but definitely my favorite green to grow Yes, it is. <laughs> well, and that was like the first plant that you really had good success with out yeah. in the garden. And sorry. when you eat it from the, from the like your your sandwich from the store or something like that, or even when we buy it from the grocery store, it doesn't have a ton of flavor and it's real like kind of wimpy is is what I'll call the leaves. They fall apart easily. They don't have a lot of texture. Whenever we grow it in the garden, it's completely different. There's a ton of texture. Um, and it, it is almost crunchy, too. Like mm-hmm. It has a really good bite to it. And each variety has its own kind of unique flavor. I'm just I'm a huge fan of spinach. Mm-hmm. So and it's also great because it will survive it where you are. It should survive over the winter and then come back in the spring. So if you plant it here, uh, here, like next week or the week after, you'll get a decent harvest off of it before the winter. And then once we hit uh, December, definitely January, depending on the weather, um, that plant will go dormant. And then basically come February-ish, uh, maybe March, again, depending on you know the weather, that plant will come back alive. And then it'll be your first spinach plant to start. It'll be the first thing you start harvesting off of pretty much. That or the kale. It's always a race between the spinach and the kale to see who can uh who can give us food first and then at that point you'll plant spinach again in the spring and then that spinach will last deeper into the the summer because the spinach that overwinters doesn't last as long in the spring it's it's not as willing to hang on okay so uh this dark side hybrid is one that we had a lot of success with um the baby leaf is also nice so let me ask you this. How how old are your kids? Nine and ten. Okay. Well, because the one of the ways that we get oh well, that's that's kale. Never mind. That dinosaur. sounds like dinosaur. One yeah, thing I will mention kale. though is if but they love they love eating these mm-hmm. too. Well, even like with uh with spinach and, and with kale too, what what we've done is we'll take these leaves and we'll we'll mix it into our spaghetti sauce. So that we, whenever we feed our kids spaghetti, they're getting a ton of spinach in it too. And they have no idea because if you just run it through like the food processor and then put it into your spaghetti sauce, it just looks like it's oregano (laughs) or something. And it doesn't really change the flavor. Do that for the older kids. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. So I think dark side hybrid, we've had a lot of success with that one. I think that's what to go with. Sounds good. Yeah, we do a lot of uh, juicing and oh, good. Try to get some spinach in there when when we can. So heck yeah, uh, that'll be good. Um, man, I wish we had time to sneak cucumbers in because with juicing, that's one of the best things to grow. Because when we, we used to a juice lot a lot, we used cucumbers a lot for a base to help with the getting a lot of liquid to mix with those things like spinach that don't have and much. Carrots, that's my favorite thing to juice. Carrots. Yes. Well, carrots will be in season, so let's look at carrots. <laughs> This is actually a great time for me to ask. So is this just because this is your app or is this app available online as well? Like on a computer as well? Um, 
so the, the app is available at, at a website too. So that's what we're using is is the online version of our app right now. So yeah, uh, the, the nice thing about this, the version, the online version of the app is if you're entering a ton of data, you can use your keyboard. So like right now I'm showing the uh, the phone view, but if you just go to app.cdspoon.net, like it's a bigger view. And the new version of the app that's coming out, hopefully this month, we are so close to having it done. But um, the new version of the app will have a, even a nicer interface. But like, especially when you're logging your garden, uh, we're not logged into Garden Plus here, but um, just being able to use your keyboard and all that makes it a lot easier sometimes when you're entering yeah. a ton of stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's how I usually do it whenever I uh, I have time. Like I'll log maybe like one or two just to remind myself out in the garden. And then I'll come inside and then like type up more on the computer. Makes it easier. Okay. So carrots. Uh, Technically, I, again, we're a little close. Yeah, you'll be all right, though. Um, one of the great things about carrots is that they can tolerate the cold pretty well. And they just they sweeten up. And you can actually leave carrots in the ground over the winter and as in the the ground will basically act like a fridge for the carrots. So you don't have to harvest them. You can just leave them out in the garden. Now come January, February ish, they're going to have, have a bunch of roots coming off of them. They're going to get kind of gross. Uh, they just get hard and kind of woody. Um, but all the way through December, we're, har we're harvesting those carrots and it's really cool. Um, <laughs> cool but but that's one of the great things about carrots is they taste better just the colder it gets they get sweeter they get sweeter yeah um but there's also ones that like the smaller ones you can grow too mm -hmm. squeeze in they may not be as great for juicing because you have to do more of them but yeah it's sort by days to harvest so that we can make sure that you get these little finger ones yeah i've heard a lot of those before yeah we've had good success with these um one thing i might recommend though is his seed tape so with carrots and with um radish any anything like that that's a real small seed that's that's 16 per square like when if you're doing square foot gardening but basically it's the seeds are you know just a couple inches apart when anytime we were doing that we like to do seed tape because it makes it so much faster I just don't have the patience to be like, and my finger, my, I can never, I always end up getting like two seeds accidentally. And then I don't, I don't remember to go through and thin it down correctly. So yeah, these are definitely ones that you would have to keep up with, with thinning down and making sure that there's not ones too close to each other. Seed tape is awesome because with these small seeds, like I, I think we were talking about with carrots, you've got to make sure you thin them down. Um, and I'm I'm a really bad gardener, to be honest with you. Like I don't always remember to do what I'm supposed to. And like that's why I, I had to like build an app to help me, right? <laughs> so carrots are one of those things where I just I really hate thinning them down. And I never seem like I have time to do it. So seed tape eliminates a lot of that because you don't have to worry about thinning them down because basically what seed tape is is it's just basically like toilet paper like if you took toilet paper and and ripped it into two two like strands and then you put the seeds in there and put it back together that's basically what it is i mean that's how you can make it yourself and we've done that before like we made seed tape ourselves like once and then i was like all right i think i'd rather buy this now but <laughs> um, but you it can do a it fun experiment yeah for sure but i just i hate well, it. tiny little seeds it's so tedious <laughs> Yeah, but it's up to you. There's um, they have both in seed tape and also just a, a packet, so you can just lay them out too. So now, certainly more economical to get seeds. Um, and there are like little tools and stuff that like you can put the seeds into and dispense them like one at a time. But anything that's like one at a time like that, I just get real tired of in a hurry, <laughs> and I don't I don't like to do it. Um, so that's why I like seed tape. So if you're like me, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I would go with seed tape. So, which of these options sounds better to you? I, I probably should go with the seed tape as well, because as much as I say that, I, oh yeah, I'll be out there and I'll, I'll uh, thin it out. No, I won't. 
it's also easier too. like if your kids help you at all in the garden it's way easier for them to plant the seed tape yeah at least for our kids they just lay it out and then you just cover it with a little bit of soil and you're good all right so we got some carrots um let's think a little bit well, more what about... else do you like to juice in in your juices like do you like to put like things like beets or yes usually carrots and beets are our two okay i guess you could describe it as so i think again let's sort by days to harvest so we can see what the fastest beets are going to be mm -hmm. this rainbow mix is 55 that one That's is what pretty cool because you get a lot of different types and especially when you're starting out i, I like to have these kind of mixes like that because then you can see which one grows best where you are or which one you like the most and it's just always fun to have variety um on beets you can do seed tape but it's not as necessary um the way that beet seeds are you have to thin them because they come in this kind of big clump that almost looks like one of those like star bite candies that you used to eat as a kid and you either eat those things those like hard candies that had the little you know what i'm talking about i actually don't i have no idea i lived on 7-eleven snacks so they were called <laughs> star bites um and basically like they just look like this little like almost like a little uh yeah, I wish I could have had a picture of a beet seed handy. <laughs> but the point is, it's a clump of seeds that are all like together. They're fairly easy to. Well, like they're, they're going to like all come up. So like you just basically you have to thin them down and they're larger seeds. It's almost like a Swiss chard seed, if you're familiar with those. Um. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is it's probably not worth it to do seed tape for beets. We don't. It, the seeds are big enough. It's okay. nine per square. Is that right? Let's look at the number per There's square. An app for that. <laughs> Nine per square. I got it. Okay. Um, so and one thing about beets too is we uh we usually grow them more for the, the greens than for the roots. Um, just because it's more liable to get greens. Sometimes it's hard to grow beets around here. It's easier in the fall. We can grow them in the fall, but spring is difficult because we're looking at hundred by in the middle of May. We're we're looking at our first like 90 you know something degree day well and if you're juicing also you can juice the greens of, of mm -hmm. them also yeah we're, the, whenever we buy them from the store we don't we don't cut those off that all goes in perfect do we need to do more than one one pack of, of beets i mean what do you think josh well i know i i do have and i saw a little further down the list i do have the uh, detroit dark seeds already okay cool so yeah, those are a classic so it sounds like you're covered on beets. Did you want to get another packet or? No, I think that's probably good there. Okay. Okay, so what else? Uh, you mentioned peas earlier. Peas are a great thing to grow in the fall as well. Um, let's look at your dates on peas. Yeah, you're good all the way through September 5th. So um, do you have a trellis area or somewhere like that that you can grow peas up on? Uh, I don't have a trellis yet, but do you have a fence or something? What's that? Or you have a like fence. a like a fence or something like that, like a chain link fence or anything like that. Uh, yeah. Because you could grow peas, um, just in a container, and then put them up against like a chain link fence, and they would do great in that. They, uh, peas are really easy to grow. And they love any type of trellis like that. Now, the way, uh, the way that we make all of our trellises um, is pretty much just like cattle panels and T-posts. So uh, T-posts, you can buy them at the store, but you can also find them on the side of the road. Like, at least in Oklahoma, it's that way where... A lot in neighborhoods. Yeah, like too. new construction, like the, the trees will come with T-posts and they take them off after like two years. And a lot of people just like put them by the curb. Yeah. Um, so we used to like I used to drive when we lived in the city and I was in neighborhoods anyway, I would always kind of drive around and look. Um I've got a stash now. So <laughs> um but the point is it's a good material to have around your garden. We use it in a number of ways, so I definitely recommend getting them anyway, because you'll need them for all sorts of stuff. And then cattle panels, we get a tractor supply. Um, you can also look on like Facebook Marketplace. A lot of times people will be selling like 10 cattle panels or something, and we use those for a number of trellises, like ones that we just like put up. I built some today, actually, where you just laid the, the 
the cattle panel up so it's just running long ways and then also we arch them over and make these arch cattle panel trellises that's that... my favorite so yeah. i love i love the arch and you can walk through it too now peas like aren't gonna get real big so you don't have to have like that big of a trellis for peas like you can get away with yeah. going to um aldi and they will have a trellis there that is yeah, pretty good we've gotten a couple from there in the summertime they have mm -hmm. like those little little small ones but it works perfect for things like peas garage sales too beans. like we used to get so many trellises and stuff like that at garage mm -hmm. garage sales so peas will like they don't need a ton of space especially if you get one of these like smaller varieties like one like of these patio, patio yeah. and these are the faster ones anyway so did i sell you on peas <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely give it a try okay let's go i'm sorting by fastest on all of these because that's really the strategy this late and i know it sounds weird to say this late when it's still 100 degrees every day where i am and it's like it's gonna but the reality is is some of these things just take some time to to grow now peas are going to be able to handle the cold like it's going to take a killing frost to kill off peas like yeah peas do really well if it's just 32 they'll be fine they'll just sweeten up it's gonna take like 25 degrees you know 26 something like that to kill off peas depending like on a number of variables like don't quote me on the temperature how fluctuate like fast it fluctuates and humidity and like yeah. how much you watered and all sorts of stuff but um but generally i'm not worried about my peas on that first frost i'm just thinking ooh, they're gonna taste better now so <laughs> uh, did i click that button already let's go look at our cart Yep, it's in there, Patio Pride. Okay, so we got some peas now. Okay, I do have to ask, have you ever tried Swiss chard? Um, I don't think I've ever tried it, no. I actually, so I do have some, I forgot to add that one on the list that I, I've got in the garden right now. Okay. Oh. And, like, it, it's only just recently, within the last maybe two weeks, it's finally actually gotten kind of tall, but... I haven't harvested yet at all. Good, because it probably would not taste good right now. The, those yeah. like greens like that get real bitter in the heat. Um, but Swiss chard is another one of those that gets sweeter as it, uh, as it gets, I don't know if sweeter is really the taste. Or, it's it's not just, quite as it's bitter. It's the better flavor. Yeah. Um, I don't like Swiss chard just eating it like by itself. Like I'm never going to eat a salad of Swiss chard, but a really cool way to use it is to replace your tortilla with it. So just like, huh? so if you want to make a little burrito or like a little wrap or a little turkey wrap or something like that, just replace the the tortilla with a, a giant Swiss chard leaf because they hold up real well. And if you put like rice and beans and taco sauce, you're not going to get taco sauce all over your hand. It's going to like stay inside of there. Um, so that's like the, the really cool thing about Swiss chard. And then that flavor is like subtly spread across the whole thing. And you're not getting like a ton of Swiss chard flavor at once. So typically I'm mixing it with like a bunch of other really strong flavors. Like we do like Swiss chard and then rice, beans, taco sauce, some ground beef, some cilantro, some onions, like, mm -hmm. so a bunch of really big flavors. And it's like a big old Chipotle burrito by the time I'm done making this thing. Um, so that's the way that we, and then the bright lights is, is the best variety. Do you still have some seeds left on Swiss chard? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay, well now you now you at least know how we recommend to to eat it. Yeah, I I put it into uh, into the salads too. I know you said you don't like it that way, but I usually add it and mix it in with like the lettuce and spinach and kale and things like that, just to add like some color too to it. Because especially that bright lights, it has a bunch of different colors and it's fun. The kids like eating it because it's really pretty. Do you like cilantro? um i don't uh we'll skip that then. Tastes like <laughs> soap? yes yes it, is, it does yeah what <laughs> percentage did I say that too? um i think we found it was like um, a certain percentage of the population like 25 well whenever i did a poll it was like 25 percent of our viewers were like yes it tastes like like soap yeah it's like a genetic predisposition yeah, it's so yeah. it tastes like soap <laughs> Do you have do you have kale? I do not. Okay, we gotta talk about kale. So um kale is one of the best things to grow uh for a number of reasons. Uh, one, you'll have it 
uh, it's rock solid through the winter. So, I mean, it, it comes from Russia. It can handle our winters fine. Um, so you don't have to worry as much even about like covering it in the winter. Like we've had plenty of kill. We've just left out to the elements and it does fine. And it covered with snow. Like I've had, I have pictures of kale in the snow. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah. And kale leaves, like, believe it or not, can taste really good. Like they can become sweet once it gets, especially like the baby kale leaves. So we like to grow kale. Well, we grow it a number of ways. Like we have some plants that get really big and have the big kale leaves, but I also really like to grow kale as baby greens. So we will seed like a whole like smart pot, like a, one of the really big ones or like a four by four raised bed. We would do that whole, th that whole area with sprinkling a mix of kale, spinach, um, lettuce, and just harvesting for, and, the, and like I'm talking planting it really thick where it's like a chia pet of salad greens. And then we just go through and harvest a square foot at a time. Yeah. When they're like, you know, yeah, like three or four inches, yeah. like, you know, baby green size. And then that'll regrow that area. You'll get like probably two cuttings off of that. And then we just kind of go through and harvest throughout the whole bed. That's our favorite way to do greens. Um, because you don't have to go through and space it all out. It's really fast to plant it. Um, now, it does cost a little more to do this because you're, you're going through a lot more seed. Um, but, you know, for us, it's worth it because we're getting a ton of greens off of it. And especially in the spring, because we have such a short window before we can't all of our lettuce bolts and spinach doesn't do well. And then we've got to switch to things like Malabar spinach in the summer. But um Let's talk about what varieties of kale. So black magic is awesome. It's a dinosaur kale and your kids uh, may like that about it. Uh, some, at least one of our kids loves that it's called dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, again, I wouldn't bother with the seed tape on kale. This, the seeds are really easy to work with. Um, they're, they're not annoying like carrot seeds. Um, so black magic is a really good one. Lacinato. That's how what I usually say. Yeah. Last night. We we did this one. Yeah. So this is this like year. the standard dinosaur kale. I think black magic is just a darker. I don't know. I'm not sure of the difference. We should have grown them side by side to see the difference on those. Yeah, I know. Right? Prism hybrid did really well for us. Mm -hmm. Um this Russian kale blend. Uh we did a taste test we on kale. The, Remember that? We did the white Russian. The white Russian? Mm -hmm. The white Russian did really well. Do you remember what, what what which one won the taste test that our kids did on all the different kells? I think it was the Russian. It was one of the Russians. It was this Russian blend. Well, let's pull that up. That was a YouTube video we did. Yeah, it was it was this Russian blend. Okay. I'm pretty sure. It's hard to go wrong with any of these though. Like all uh, of yeah, these varieties of kale are rock solid. Like some so, of them have more of like the crinkly leaves, and then some of look them. At this. this is garden blend. Some of them are flatter, so it's really what you prefer. Also, this blend is a really good mix. That might be the one to go with. That way, you can try all these different ones, and again, see which ones do best in your soil. Oh, and... we've grown that purple one before. Mm hmm. Carries a sucker for any plant that's purple. I am. <laughs> And I remember growing that one. It was so pretty. I took a picture of it and everybody thought I put a filter on it. But I was like, there's no filter on that. It is that beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that one looks like a good idea. I think we'll go with that one. Good. All right. So we've got seven in our cart. What? So what else have, have we not talked about? We haven't that you talked about... Well, we got to make sure we cover all his though, or we we're gonna hijack this. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that we've missed or we haven't talked about that you know that you want to grow? I I'm so inexperienced. I don't know what I would what I would want to grow. So, what do you like to eat the most? Are there certain things from the grocery store you're always buying a lot of? I guess for growing stuff, at least it's mostly fruits. We, I mean, okay, just the 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 basic veggies, I guess, carrots and whatnot. Okay, broccoli. I can't remember the last time we've had broccoli. 
So have you ever had kohlrabi? No. We had never had it either uh, until we, again, we we just like have to try everything. I, yeah. I saw it and I was like, that looks really cool. Let's try growing it. I had never, never tried it, never eaten it. And yeah, it was really interesting it's, to try it. It's basically, so it's in the same family as broccoli. Um, do you like the stem part of broccoli? Like if you like have a stir fry, do you just like the flower part of the broccoli head or do you like the stems also? I mean, if you're talking stir fry, the stems too, yeah. Okay. Kohlrabi is basically a big softball size broccoli stem with tennis ball. Tennis ball. You're supposed to harvest it at tennis ball size. Okay. Tennis ball size <laughs> size broccoli stem that is bred to be the best tasting stem stem. So like we basically take that big tennis ball and we cut it up into little one inch cubes, put some and the leaves too. Yeah. Like the entire it has some leaves all around it too. It's all edible. But it's not a ton of leaves. It's it's really just that like kind of big ball is is the purpose of well, what it grows. Pictures probably. Yeah. 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 Uh, so right. Well, that's sort of here. We can go into here and there's a bigger picture. So you can see that. So that's basically like what you get, but you get that in like 50 days. And it's also, there's not as much room for pests to be on there. So like with broccoli, it's a big plant. There's lots of room for them to hide. And like, this is just easier because the pests don't really, we didn't really have any issues with pests on it anyway, but yeah. it's easy to see them because it's not a big plant. It also doesn't take a, a ton of space. So basically we just take that big ball, cut it up into one of those cubes, put some olive oil and some like salt and pepper. We love our air fryers. We air fry everything. Let's throw it in there for like, what, eight minutes and press the broccoli button for the broccoli button. Yeah. <laughs> and then put a little cheese on there sometimes for the kids. And it's really good. And it's, it's um, I think, you know, especially as a beginner, it's easier to grow than broccoli, certainly easier than cauliflower or Brussels sprouts or anything like that so um did we sell you Plus, it's fun looking too for the kids too if you want to get the <laughs> kids involved because it looks way different than any other plant you've probably ever grown <laughs> and they will think it's really really cool looking so this one this express is the one that we had the most success with and this one's 42 days so i think that's that's the variety we should go with sounds good go with there Okay, so we've got two more that we're looking for here. So we haven't done the herbs. It's really herbs aren't really super easy to to to, to germinate a lot of times though. So I don't think I'd want to start you there unless it was something like cilantro. Cilantro is pretty easy. Basil's easy, but it's not the right time of year for it. Um, you have Swiss chard. Turnips are pretty easy also, and you like beets, so that might be a nice thing to try too. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think it's, about turnips? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I got one style in the garden right now. It was the French breakfast, I think is what it was called. Was that a radish That's maybe? A radish. Oh, no, no, that is a radish. You're right. So no, I don't have any turnips. Okay. This purple top here. Um is the one that we've had the best success with in the past. And you can grow them just like beets, basically. Okay. So we look at the number per square on it. Oh, it's 16 per square. So it's more like carrots. Um, One thing I want to product, I want to show to you that makes things easier. I'm sure that we've got a seeding square. Oh, you passed it right there. Right here. This device here, the seeding square, makes planting a lot of these um, 16 per square items easier. Um, and if you're at all OCD, like I am, like I have to have everything spaced out perfectly and this does that for me. So for turnips, especially if I weren't doing seed tape with carrots, I would do this thing, you know, and, and do the 16. Um, it also helps for beans, for beets. Uh, I, I recommend checking out this thing. Uh, it's called the seeding square. Um, but it's super helpful for a lot of these smaller seeds. And it's made, it's pretty cool story too. Like it was just made by a family 
up in Canada, super cool people that and just kind of invented this in their backyard, kind of like we did the app. And yeah. um, and now they're they went on the Canadian Shark Tank and that kind of stuff with it. Too. Nice. So pretty cool people. And they still like are like shipping them out of their house and doing all sorts of stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, did we add that to the card already? I don't think we did. I don't know. Did we sell you on turnips? You want to try? Uh, I'm sold. Okay. okay. All right, so we got one left. Well, do we? Well, let's see. Let's go look at what we got here. Okay. Oh, we got more we than got one. Like two. We got like probably. two. All right. Sold us short. Uh, let's look at potatoes. Do you like growing potatoes? Have you tried every, or, or do you like the idea of growing potatoes? I, I like the idea. I've got sweet potatoes in the ground right now. Okay. Um, I don't know how that's turning out yet. I lost one of the plants got eaten. I, I noticed that, but the others seem to be thriving pretty good. So, um, it looks like the planting window isn't open on shipping potatoes right now. So, not able to do those. I do. I do recommend potatoes are great to have in your rotation though, because it's one of those things that once you grow them, you'll have them forever because you can just save. Well, you. You really won't have a choice a lot of the time because if you nick any piece of that potato off while you're harvesting it, that will become another potato plant next year. So you'll have potatoes popping up every year. But if you yeah. purposely save it, then you definitely, you know, you can you can find the varieties that you like and then save those potatoes and then plant them again in the fall. And then you just kind of then you plant again in the spring and then you have the rotation of potatoes going. And especially in Kansas City, you'll be able to get away with planting potatoes pretty early, especially if you cover them at all or do things like that. Um, one of my favorite YouTube channels is One Yard Revolution. I don't know if he makes videos anymore. I think it's been a bit, but he grew potatoes up in, he was in Vermont, I think, in like January. Somewhere far up north, yeah. And he basically grew them inside of a compost pile. He's like planted them inside of his compost pile. And potatoes are super cool. I mean, Matt Damon grew them on Mars. <laughs> you know? Uh, here's something that we haven't talked about yet about garlic. Yes. Great point. Have you grown garlic or do you want to grow garlic? Uh, I've never grown it before. And oh, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd give it a try. I just don't know. Uh, oh, I don't know what I would do with it yet. So about chives then here's what I recommend doing. Go to your, uh, so we're sold out of this elephant garlic. Um, go to like an organic grocery store near you. And I bet you they'll have the elephant garlic. Typically, we can find it at ours. And if you buy it at an organic grocery store, then it's pretty safe. The reason why you want to avoid some of the the non-organic ones is because a lot of times they spray them with something to keep them from sprouting. Um, but the thing that's cool about garlic is you'll plant it in the fall, and then it'll come up a little bit. And then once you have a freeze, like it'll die off a little bit. But then in the spring, it'll come back with vengeance and that's when you want to harvest it is uh after it goes through a frost and all of that so let's think about something that he can for his biodome too because a lot of these things like the carrots the beets like none of those he you can really plant in the biodome so let's with the biodome he's probably going to be using it to grow probably his spring stuff it's probably a little too late to be starting stuff right now for fall in the chives. biodomes. I mean, we talked about yeah, that. chives would be a good option to start in that biodome. That'd be it. Do you like chives? Do you like onions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so chives are really easy to grow, and this will be a really cool project for you to do with with your kids if you want. You could take these um, chive seeds and use the biodome and. Um, just basically put like two or three inside of each little biodome cell. Um, and you wouldn't have to do the whole biodome, but like, uh, but it, they will definitely grow really well. And then you'll be able to plant those out in the fall. Um, and then they'll overwinter and come back next year and you'll have them every year. And then they'll, they'll come back and they'll spread on their own. And eventually you'll have like a whole giant area of chives that y'all started from seed, like in your biodome. Like that's, um, what are other things? So could he probably don't want to do a whole biodome of chives. Let's, well, let's... We have other <clears throat> stuff in there. Um, I 
the kale. The kale would be a good option to start in that biodome because it's still going to be and the kohlrabi. So the kohlrabi and the kale mix, um, I would start in the biodome because by the you're going to get those seeds uh, probably this weekend. I would imagine you would have them by then, um, and it's still going to be too hot to plant. I mean, you can probably you can plant it outside. You have to baby it. I don't like to do that. I like to start them in really good conditions and then move them out once that first like uh fall cold front hits mid September uh or early you know I'll kind of time it around like we're not hitting 100 anymore because it just puts a lot of stress on the plants I'd rather than be in this in a nice environment in that biodome and then we can sometimes we'll even up pot them into like a silicone little transplant tray or something like that but um so that that's what I would do with the kale and with kohlrabi. Now, the root crops, you never want to do that. Root crops do not transplant uh well. Once they're once they're planted, they don't want to be moved. So I would never do that with a root crop. You can do it with spinach also, and it might be worth it. Um with the salad bowl mix, though, I, I would just sprinkle that in an area, kind of like we talked earlier about having the little salad patch. That that's what I would do. With, with the salad yeah um but chives are definitely something I, like, I would recommend yeah so chives i like having a variety too there's like garlic chives and onion chives so like they taste a little bit different too and they have different color flowers <laughs> <laughs> that's the cool thing too about chives is that the flowers are edible so our kids love that they can just walk up and eat this like purple flower and it's a very mild onion flavor. So it's the same flavor as onion. It's just not as, as strong and it tastes really good. It's really cool. Yeah, I love it. All right. I like the sound of that one. All right. Let's go with chives and then let's do some garlic chives also. I, I think it's good to have a mix of them. And then if uh, you'll ha have that garlic flavor. And now the chives will spread and they do really well they will take over so if you put them in a pot that's probably the best thing is to put them in a pot that you want them to take over and uh, they'll do really well and too okay. like if you had them in a pot you could kind of like if if you uh, once we hit winter you could bring them inside into an area and then just continue to harvest from them if you leave them outside it's fine they're just going to go like the, the leaves are going to die back it's going to go dormant. If you bring it in, you can continue to harvest because those leaves are going to get all gross once that first freeze hits. Yeah, but it'll come back in the springtime, too, if you leave it out. Oh, yeah, it'll it'll thrive. You'll, it'll do great. You'll have it forever. They also bring in a lot of, like, butterflies, bees, things yeah. like that, too. A lot of pollinators. All right, so we're at $48, but we have our coupon code for 15% off, so I think we can sneak in one more. <laughs> So collard greens are another great green. Um, and this is another one that um, gets really big. So like these leaves get get really big. And this is another one that's that's good to use as a tortilla replacement. So there are some times where I go to to make my little burrito and I just not I, I, I don't want Swiss chard that day. For whatever reason, it's just like I'm tired of Swiss chard. I don't want it. Then I can switch to collards. So I'm not stuck with just Swiss chard. And I've got the rotation it's of... It's milder flavor, too. Yeah. And it's also... Um, I love taking collard leaves and chopping them up and then stir-frying them. And it tastes almost like the inside of an egg roll. Um, it's a very similar flavor because it's kind of like cabbage, too. Um, which uh, we should have looked at some of the cabbage. That, that may have been even a better... I'm torn. Collards or Chinese cabbage? What do you think? <laughs> I'm I'm a huge fan of bok choy myself. All right, here's the uh, question. You want bigger leaves or smaller leaves? Because collard leaves, collard greens are giant leaves. Again, like big tortilla replacement. The Chinese cabbage leaves typically we're harvesting when they're smaller, but they are very good. Um I'm torn. Which one sounds better? Do you want larger leaves or smaller? <laughs> I I don't know. Um I think we got to both. I think that's what we got to do. <laughs> okay, because I can't, I can't pick. They're both too exciting. 
I think it's there. Are they it's under, under cabbage? Bok choy. It's under bok choy. Yeah. Okay. And I like the uh, it, that um, this one, the toy choy. That one or the Lee Run Choi, those both did really, really well. Which one do you think looks cooler? This one or that one? Do you see it? I'm gonna, the, I, I bet you the kids would absolutely love to look at that first one. Okay. Yeah, that one's really cool. Yeah. And they grew really well for us. They did great. Okay. And these also uh, would do well starting in that biodome. Um, it's 40 days to mature though, so it does not take long. This yeah, might be one really that fast. I started it in ours, but um, it's gonna be going outside fairly soon, <laughs> yeah. And this might be one that, like, just wait until that first cold front comes through and then plant it right then. You've got plenty of time to harvest it. So, let's look at the dates on this for your area. Yeah, look, you've got all the way until October 3rd on this one. And what you might want to do is do what's called succession planting. So mm -hmm. do several rounds of it. So plant some whenever you first get get it and then, you know, maybe give it a couple of weeks and then plant some more. So that way you always have some at different stages and you always have some you can harvest from. Okay. Well, I'm excited for you, Josh. I think you've got a really good do. stuff coming. I'd love to follow back up with you here uh, at the end of the fall or throughout the fall and to see how it's going and answer any questions that you have. I think you've, you've got a good mix coming. So we'll get this shipped out to you. We'll get this order placed tonight. It'll be uh, be going out tomorrow. So it's coming from South Carolina. So however long it takes from South Carolina <laughs> to you. Um, but let us know if you have any questions. Um, Carrie has some really good videos showing how to use that biodome and how to set it up and all that kind of stuff. But it's pretty simple. It's really nice. I like I like the 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 thing that's nice about that biodome is you're able to control the humidity inside of there a lot easier because those vents slide open, mm -hmm. um, and those that containers like is really hard plastic that you don't ruin by putting something on top of it. And because like the ones we that we we used to get that were that real flimsy like top like I broke those within a day of getting them every single time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just or the cat would jump on it or something and and these biodomes handle their cat their cat proof i would say definitely cat proof yeah <laughs> maybe clark's a really big cat he might no be. they're tested okay. yeah, we're good <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited for you to be able to check to to try that out do you have a, a grow light and all that kind of stuff already for it uh i do yes awesome great very cool. Well, it was nice getting to chat with you, Josh. Good, good chat with you guys, too. And, and Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she cooperated for this part of the yeah, video. Yeah, she's sleeping now. <laughs> so She was tired. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll get your address from you and all that. And we'll do the checkout off screen so everybody doesn't have uh, your address information and, and my credit card information. So <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. good. Great. Talk to you later, Josh. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.